Steve Pakin. Hi, Doug. Nice Doug to meet Hall. you. You're not that far away from the culmination of all this, are you? No, that's right. It's been a long road, but we're certainly getting close enough to the end that it's a really exciting time for us. More than a decade to get to that. Yes, yes. Uh, between the planning and uh, getting things underway and then getting funded, uh, it's certainly been a long road, but a very interesting one. And away we go. Hmm. The miners know what you're up to? Yes, most of them do now. I think uh, uh, certainly they, they realize what's involved in the snow lab. They, uh, you know, certainly uh, why we're doing it is a, is a tougher question, and certainly we've gotten some aspects of that across. There you go. Remember the first time you rode in one of these? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, How was that? <laughs> Oh, I don't, I don't mind, uh, you know, up and down motion, so I didn't uh, really uh, uh, mind too much at all. But until I started working on this project, I, uh, I hadn't really any direct experience with a working mine. There's a, a tourist mine nearby that, uh, that uh, people can go down 100 feet or so, but that, that really doesn't compare to this. <laughs> that was a fun ride. Yes. Not our usual one, but uh, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> it's actually amazing. It's quite amazing it to is. go down that fast, that far. Yeah. Got room, Gary? Or? Yeah. Okay. The rock temperature down here is about 41 degrees C, so you don't have very much um, air moving through, then the uh, passageway will come up to that kind of temperature. Considering the tens of millions of high-tech dollars that are just down here, this seems like a very primitive way to get around, you know? Well, we've come down 6,800 feet. We're now uh, just about to enter the lab, and we've walked about a kilometer and a half from the uh, shaft, so uh, we're just about to enter the lab at this point. It was packed on that uh, trip down, wasn't certainly it? certainly was. Uh, that's a little tighter than usual, but uh, it's uh, pretty common that they uh, try to use the cage most efficiently there. That's fast. That trip down, that was fast. Yes, 2,200 feet a minute. Uh, that's uh, faster than the CN Tower elevator, I believe, and uh, certainly gets us down pretty quickly. How are your ears? Okay. You're used to it, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, lean on, McCuff. Okay. Okay, we have to wash our boots here, so... So if you just put your foot on the grate there... Okay. Now, we should tell everybody, we have just taken off our old clothes, showered, put on new clothes, everything is spick and span, as they say. I guess we grab a hard hat now. How come we had to go through all that? Well, it's because uh, the dust that we uh, meet in the mine here is actually uh, a potential problem to our experiment. Uh, the dust is pretty ordinary dust, but it does have small amounts of impurities, uranium and thorium, that's present everywhere on the surface of the Earth, but it would bother our experiment. It would produce some light. Uh, we're looking for these tiny amounts of light that are produced by neutrinos. If we have too much of this background, we just won't be able to see them clearly. We're not done. More shower. That's right. Uh, we have a little photo cell here that we have to uh, kick to. Uh, so this is a, a way of getting the last of the dust off of our uh, outfits. And uh, certainly in clean rooms where they're doing semiconductor work, this is a very important step in going into the room. For us, it's a bit borderline, but it still reinforces that this is a clean lab and that people should work accordingly. So useful lot. Uh, Well, we're now coming in above the detector, and as we walk across this uh, section here, we're actually walking to our deck, which is right over top of the detector. Doug, how long did it take to build all this? Hmm. Well, we started excavating this project in, in uh, about March of 1990, and of course, uh, that's a long time ago. Uh, we spent the first uh, uh, almost three years excavating, and then uh, from that point on, we've really been uh, assembling the different parts of the detector. Okay, the crown jewel in this $70 million lab is right down here. That's right, it's just off of the deck we're on now, and uh, going down from here, you can see on the outside wall this uh, plastic coating that aligns the whole cavity. In from that is the uh, light sensor sphere that's about 17 meters across and has 9,500 light sensors. That's where uh, a good part of the effort has gone into installing those. 
And then in from that, another several meters, is a 12-meter diameter acrylic vessel. And the acrylic vessel actu actually had to be bonded in place here. And that was really the most time-consuming part of our assembly period. Uh, it's about two inches or uh, five centimeters thick. And it holds our 1,000 tons of heavy water than this very valuable detecting medium that we have. So we, we can... $300 million worth. That's right. Yes. And uh, that will be uh, added pretty soon now. Our, our water level down in the bottom of the cavity is up, I'm told, to about four feet or a little over a meter. And uh, we are bringing that up to the bottom of this acrylic vessel. Then we'll be starting to add the heavy water. Hmm. What's all this? This is the center part of the deck, and uh, this is a separate clean room. We're already in a clean lab, but this is a super clean area that we want to maintain very clean because this is where we will be adding some things to the heavy water. And because the heavy water has to be so super clean, anything we put in it also has to be really clean to make sure we don't add to our backgrounds. You're all neat freaks, aren't you? This is a huge experiment designed to figure out about neutrinos. Start by telling us what a neutrino is. A neutrino is one of the building blocks that we find around us in the universe. It's one that we only relatively recently have found out about. Neutrinos have only really been uh, verified for the last uh, about 40 years ago. And uh, we still have a lot of things that we don't know about them. They, they don't appear too often uh, to us, uh, but we do find them as we look closely at uh, things on Earth here and also uh, at what comes to us from the sun and other stars, we find that neutrinos really are very prevalent in the universe and that they're really the most common particle in the whole universe. And in, in the case of the sun, uh, the neutrinos that we get from the sun, and that's our most prevalent source of the neutrinos we're going to be looking at, those neutrinos tell us what happens deep in the core of the sun. And they come to us at virtually the speed of light, so we have this instant message about what's happening in the core of the sun. Why is it useful to know that? It's useful because that process, which is known as fusion, is a process that releases energy. It's what powers the sun. It's also a process that we want to try to harness on Earth here. When a neutrino hits your array, it creates a blue flash. Wh what right. do you infer from that? What do you learn when you see that blue flash? From the amount of light, we can tell the uh, amount of energy the neutrino had. In some of the reactions, we can tell the direction the neutrino came. And if we analyze a whole series of these events, we can actually distinguish the type of neutrino or tell whether some other species of neutrino are present. There are actually three of those, and only uh, a single type has actually been looked at with the other experiments. So we're going to be unique in our ability to see uh, more about neutrinos than the other labs have been able to do. You know what's astonishing, I can't quite get my head around it still, is that we are more than a mile under the ground we have just emerged from a filthy, dirty mine, and we are in, you know, fairly pristine conditions here. Yes, and that's there's right. The, I mean, there is, there's Mother Earth right there. It's quite something. That's right. Uh, you can see the dome of, of this whole cavity above us, uh, and it is interesting, uh, and as you point out, the, the change in conditions that we've established down here. I guess that's one thing about modern science is that one has to go to some rather unusual conditions to do the science that's of interest uh, for today. Uh, we can't just stick uh, something in a test tube or go to a lab and do a benchtop experiment. Uh, we've graduated to much larger collaborative uh, work. It's very similar to an optical telescope or a large accelerator. We're trying to find out uh, this very fundamental information about how our universe works. You're only trying to learn something as insignificant as, oh, the origins of the universe, the future of the universe, <laughs> small questions like that. Want to help us out on that? Sure. Neutrinos have a connection with the early universe. They were emitted in huge numbers at the origin of the universe. And they can tell us, uh, uh, by knowing their properties, a lot more about how our universe is unfolding and how it will unfold. There is a lot of material currently not seen out there. And we know from the motions of galaxies uh, just uh, roughly what the amount of mass that we should have in the universe. But when we add up what we actually see visibly, we don't come anywhere close to that total. Neutrinos, if they have a mass, uh, may form a, a large part of this missing material. And if there's enough of that around, then our universe will slow down and eventually uh, 
uh, start uh, um, uh, contracting instead of expanding. So uh, one of the challenges in these measurements is to um, find out as much as we can about neutrinos to see if they do have a mass. It may be a rather tiny mass. Nonetheless, because there are so many neutrinos, this could add up to a very significant factor in how our universe will expand. I'm going to say, if they exist, they must have mass, don't they? No, they can uh, actually, in the current theories, they can uh, exist as massless particles. And that's the, the challenge here, is to do the best job we can on looking uh, at the neutrinos to determine whether we can uh, put in a mass limit uh, that will really uh, make a difference as to how we view the future of the universe. It seems in science these days that the more you find out, all it proves is that you don't know very much at all. Is it possible you'll learn something here that will render useless a whole bunch of stuff you knew in the past? Science is built on a whole series of measurements and a whole series of theories that progress, and we're really just uh, continuing on this process. Going our way, gentlemen? Thank you. You know what? We are really traveling fast. <laughs> Man, this thing is amazing. <laughs> Well, i got to thank you. That was one hell of a tour. Well, I enjoyed it, Thanks too, and I'm glad you could come. I hope you uh, know a little more about neutrinos. I do. And good luck on opening day. Thanks a lot. Thank